So this is a predicting the read, uh, redox reaction using our Alberta Chem 30 data booklet. If something isn't in our booklet, we're not going to be able to make any predictions uh, with the, the five or six step method. This question is as hard as you get because of the big list. So I'm going to go through meticulously piece by piece, build that list, and then we need to meticulously go through our data booklet and find our OAs and RAs. So what are the products of the reaction of? I've got an ionic compound to start. Uh, luckily, that's got the stock system, the Roman, no Roman numeral two. So that is telling us that tin is the two plus type. So I don't have to go to my data booklet to look up charges. Chloride, I know is minus one. Everything in group 7A or 17 is minus one. So I want to keep going. I dealt with the two pieces to that ionic compound. Now I've got another ionic compound, ammonium dichromate. So ammonium is in your polyatom, uh, above the periodic table in the polyatomic ion section. Dichromate is also Cr2O7 2 minus. got through that ionic compound and it's been acidified with hydrochloric acid. So that's a strong acid that's going to 100% ionize. We're using the Arrhenius H plus version and it would produce chloride which is already on my list. So I'm not going to put a, I'm not going to repeat a species more than once. Now this is a solution and all solutions we assume are water-based unless told otherwise. So that's our fairly long list. With practice, these type of questions have to be doable. Right now they seem tricky because you're not used to all the species on the table. So one reason we have this question is to kind of remind you about tin too. It is one of those ions that shows up on both sides. We have tin 2 as an RA. We expect metal ions to be OAs, and this one is both. It's on both columns. Tin 2 and iron 2, it helps to kind of memorize or remember they're both. So that's an OA and an RA. Chloride, we've talked about in some previous examples. It's a reducing agent by itself and paired with water is a reducing agent. Okay. Then we get to ammonium, which is really annoying while you're learning. There is no ammonium on this table. You'd probably take a minute searching for it. It's not there it's not an oxidizing agent or a reducing agent, or at least one that you can uh, identify from the table. So that's not there. I'll keep circling. There's my chloride and chloride and water. Dichromate, another really important chemical to be familiar with. There are two really common oxidizing agent pairs. Dichromate is one of them. We have dichromate and it must be acidified. And that's why we had that ending little bit of acidification. So dichromate with H plus 14 of them is an oxidizing agent. Okay. The other super common lab oxidizing agent, which we don't have in this question is permanganate that's acidified. Those two, I'd want them to be top of mind. You see acidified dichromate, acidified permanganate, you're expecting them to be the best OA. So if they take out that red line, we don't have that. So this dichromate by itself is not an oxidizing agent, but that pairing is. We expect H plus all by itself. That's one of the patterns I want you to be familiar with. So let's label that. Got that. We've got H plus. Okay. 
all by itself. And then last, I'll circle them here, last on our list is water shows up as an RA and water also shows up as an OA. So again, it's a strategy that I use. I put all the OAs on the top, all the RAs on the bottom. So let's figure out our chemistry, the strongest OA, and then I'll find the strongest RA. So I've got tin, dichromate acid, combo, acid, and water. This is where if you have a table and you use stickies uh, or you lightly underline, you can just look in your OA column, realize the strongest oxidizing agent is at the top. So the highest one we have is that dichromate in H+. So that's our winner compared to the others that we have, water being the worst of them. So I'm going to pull that reduction verbatim from the table. Cr2O7 to minus. So that's our reduction. We take uh, dichromate, turn it into chromium ions and some water. Now I've got to scan the other list, my reducing agents. I've got tin 2, I've got chloride, I've got water, and I've got a chloride water pairing. So now I'm starting at the bottom. I have cut off some of my table, but the strongest reducing agent is at the bottom. And I don't have any reducing agents from way at the bottom, but I do have four of them. The lowest one down would be our strongest. So that's the strongest reducing agent that we have is the tin two. The most common error with this question would be missing that tin 2 is in both columns, and then you might pick water incorrectly as the strongest reducing agent. So tin 2 can become tin 4. I like to line up my arrows for netting things up. And you'll find any of the multivalent um, metals, if they're the lower charge, they can become the higher charge or zero. And they'll show up as both OAs and RAs. So we've done most of the hard work. We just need to net this up. We need to think of the lowest common multiple which will balance our electrons. We've got six and two. Uh, so we've got six, 12, 18, two, four, six, eight, and six is the first repeat. We can get both of these to six. The top half reaction multiplied by one, I'm not gonna write that. Bottom one, I'm going to triple. So that's a one before, so I'm gonna triple that. Triple the one tin four and triple the three to six. So our electrons cancel. Sometimes H plus or other species will cancel, but not in this case. So we have dichromate plus 14H plus. So that pairing is my OA. Then I've got 3, 10, 2 plus as my RA. No rule that says you have to have OA first, RA second. You make chromium 3 plus ions, 7 water, and 3, 10, 4 plus. 
And does this occur? I'm going back to my table, but I just want to look at the arrow, the winners, and we do have the best OA is above the best RA. So this is a spontaneous reaction. You mix them, and they're just going to react in your beaker. Or this is the type of thing we could do a titration with, not an acid-base titration like CAM20, but an OA-RA redox titration. But we have to separate the OA and the RA as titrant and sample. Okay. So that's our five steps. The only thing I'm going to end with is the chem diploma loves to put in lab-based observational type skills. On page 11 of your data booklet, there are colors of ions. And some of those show up in this question. Dichromate is listed on page 11 of your booklet. Okay. This, depending on its concentration, is a dark orange or a lighter orange if the concentration falls below 0.1. We don't have tin 2 data. H plus has no color. Chromium 3 plus is also in our booklet. At a high concentration, it is a blue-green, which appears more green as the concentration drops to 10 millimoles per liter. So if this was a redox titration, we would see orange at the beginning when all the orange is faded away and we just see the blue-green uh, would indicate that we've reached an equivalence point and could stop the titration. Okay. But you should be you be prepared to use any of the science 10 skills that you've learned. You might have hydrogen gas produced, bubbles, okay, pop tests. You might, oxygen is a product on your redox table. You could do a glowing splint test. You've got blue and red litmus paper for pH. Okay. We've got H plus ions in this half reaction. If we think of what's going to happen to those ions as the reaction occurs, they would be going away. So we would know something about the pH. So if we think what happens when H plus goes away, it's going to become less acidic. So if it's becoming less acidic, we should see the pH increase over time. So if we use a uh, pH paper or a pH probe. Okay. So there's lots of ways we can get observational data from uh, redox titrations. A higher mental activity question would be, what is the half reaction and what observations might you see?